Hi, this is Jacob with MarketingPlaybook.co and we're now going to take a look at AdWords Display and recover a bit more into targeting and going over layering again as well as uh, some quick things on negative targeting. So I'm in an AdWords Display, I'm in a particular ad group right now, I'm on the Display Network tab and I'm on the Summary tab, it really doesn't matter which tab you're on underneath here. And I'm actually going to scroll all the way down to the bottom and right here we're going to see where I listed campaign keyword exclusions and this is important because if you're bidding on keywords you might find that you're showing up quite a bit on placements for certain things that you don't want to show up for and I'll use an example of let's say I'm promoting a potty training guide or potty training course and I want to bid on the keyword potty training well all keywords in display network are broad keywords so if I was bidding on potty training chances are I'm probably going to end up showing up on dog potty training sites and puppy training sites and uh, other related animals for potty training but this is a human potty training course so down here what you can do is you can create negative keyword exclusions and all you have to do to do that is hit the exclusions button and then it's going to take you right down here to the campaign exclusion section and you can go ahead and add in the keywords that you want to exclude and you have the same options here with site category exclusion so we're gonna go ahead and dive into these but we're gonna to get to it through the top tab so I'm gonna scroll up and right here is the targeting tab and this is where you're gonna end up spending a bit of time putting together different campaigns so let's dive in here now I'm already in an ad group so I'm not asked to select an ad group and here are the keywords that I'm bidding on at any point in time I can go ahead and edit those keywords I can also if we look right here I'm actually layering so not only am I targeting keywords so I'll just dive in there so you can see these are the keywords that I'm targeting close this within this particular campaign it also looks like I'm targeting topics so I added both of these in there and you do that simply by selecting add targeting and then selecting another targeting option and we covered uh, layering a little bit earlier on and basically that's just when you're combining one or more different targeting options for instance keywords with topics or it might be keywords with affinity groups or keywords with a particular demographic so if I go into topics here we're gonna see that I select this topic and then right here is an important distinction that we're gonna show so I have target and bid and so this is gonna show ads only on pages about these topics with the option to bid on them when this is selected is what it's doing is it's combining both the keywords and the topics together so it's saying that okay not only do these keywords have to be related to whatever the content is of that page that my ads displaying on but it also needs to be in this particular category and that's an important distinction so if I said bid only is what I'm doing is that basically I'm almost having two different ad groups I'm saying yeah show it when this matches and this matches together but also show it when just this matches and I don't necessarily want that I want generally when you're layering you're going to combine them both if you wanted to just target this particular topic uh, antivirus and malware I would recommend you create a new ad group and just target that separately the next item that we have here that we're going to dive more into is going to be your targeting optimization so if this is checked then by default uh, the conservative targeting will be on and so what this will do is it'll find additional customers at your current cost per customer now it's not actually going to be at the current cost it's going to be right around the current cost now this one only works when you're using if we hover over this question mark right there it only come kicks in when you are using keywords or you're doing your remarketing list so in this instance it will work because I'm using keyword targeting if I was just doing affinity targeting or I'm sorry if I was just doing targeting topics then this isn't going to work not currently will that change in the future probably now by default this is actually going to be turned on in most cases and for most people I do recommend you just have it on if you discover that that it's spending a little bit too much for you you can go ahead and try turning it off if you don't have enough conversion data it, it works best when you have conversions coming in so once you hit that 30 or 40 conversions in a given month is when this starts to play more of a role for you 
and because I haven't had this campaign or this campaign's been inactive for quite a while so I don't even have the aggressive targeting as an option now let's say the campaign has a few hundred conversions in it in a given month because I'm doing lead generation or sales I would recommend coming in here and going to go ahead and try doing the aggressive targeting this can be a fantastic way of expanding out your ad campaign and this will work even if I'm just targeting topics it'll go out and is what I'll do is I'll use the display campaign optimizer and go out and find customers right around uh, your current cost per customer or even lower and this is a great way to expand out your campaign to discover new URLs so I would recommend you try the uh, aggressive targeting when it becomes an option and if you're having probably right around a hundred uh, plus leads a month coming in now if you're a small business owner and just targeting inside let's say Denver right the more you layer the more you're excluding people so I really wouldn't recommend layering if you're just targeting a specific geo what I would do if you're targeting the United States you definitely can layer and this can come in uh, as a big benefit when you create multiple lists so I'll have these keywords going with this particular uh, topic group and then I can have that same keyword list with a different topic group and it's what you can do is is view the results in the spend that comes in and you can go ahead and pause ad groups that aren't really performing well and that way you're dedicating your budget to ad groups that are performing well so by customizing and switching some of these around and doing a little bit of mix and match in separate ad groups you're giving yourself the best chance of finding an, a combination that's going to work well for you now in a previous video I already did cover the numerous options that you have when it comes to targeting so we're going to kind of skip over that now right here you have ad group exclusions and this can be important when you want to exclude let's say a URL just from the ad group because it's not performing but in another ad group that URL might be performing uh, YouTube is a perfect example for me in a lot of campaigns I have YouTube uh, being rock solid uh, within within that campaign but in some ad groups for whatever reason the combination of targeting that I was doing uh, just didn't hit the mark and when that happens I might end up having to exclude YouTube but I don't want to exclude it for my whole entire campaign because in some ad groups it's making me a lot of money however in one particular ad group it might not be and that's where this can come in where you can go ahead and add negative exclusions for keywords placements topics and uh, uh, interest space groups and you have the exact same um, exclusion options on a campaign level so looking at this particular campaign there, there must have been a reason why I put in goggles search I have no idea why this campaign is is long expired so I haven't touched it in quite a long time but there's I was probably finding that I was appearing on a lot of pages with this particular term and it wasn't making me any money so I excluded it from this uh, from the campaign as a whole if we look here I have negative placements it looks like I have 29 negative placements that I put on here and these were probably targets that were not making me money uh, for the product or service that that I was advertising and right here is the category options now category options can be pretty interesting and I really would recommend that you do not exclude a lot starting off in here because you never know where those leads are going to come from and you're not quite sure removing a particular category might just remove a site that's going to bring in quite a bit of sales so I understand that you know death and tragedy maybe maybe not you know you can look in through all of these and kind of see what what these all entail so this happens to be obituaries and you might think well you know somebody who's looking at obituaries isn't going to be interested in this or natural disasters or accidents and you might not necessarily see the correlation to your particular industry but trust me um, having this on can actually be a big boost let's say I sold generators right well during a natural disaster generators could sales for generators definitely pick up I'll just say that during natural disasters so if this was off I might not appear on particular news sites and stories around that so I would recommend that you do not exclude any of these unless you know all right I know because my product and I want to protect my brand and I don't want to show it to mature audiences 
you know, that's about the only time where, where I recommend you can go through this. Otherwise, forums can be great for leads, social networks can, even parked domains can bring in stuff. So in these particular instances, I shut these off because I, I'm, I'm sure based upon data, I found that they weren't working for me. Now, the one that I would kind of come back to is this Gmob mobile app, non-interstitial. So with, with this one, I, I do oftentimes shut this off early on just because I don't want my ads showing inside mobile apps. They're usually really, really poor. I'm tired of experimenting with it myself because it just doesn't ever seem to bring me in any money. So generally, this is about the only one I kill off right away. I'm not saying to do it. Um, it's just an option for you. There's nothing wrong with keeping these on just to to and exclude on the placement end. And we'll get more into that in the optimization video. And because we're talking about targeting, I'm going to go back here and I'm going to show you a quick hack that I do oftentimes because I have a lot of uh, campaigns going on at one time. So you'll see here these are many different ad groups that I have uh, within uh, this this. Uh, let me go to the campaign level and show you the ad groups that we have. There we go. So I have a lot of different ad groups going on. These happen to be keyword keyword related. But if I wanted to say, okay, here's, I want to layer multiple campaigns together, what I can do is I can create kind of a campaign template that I can just pause and then just copy. Or it could even be active. So I can just take this, I can click edit. I can go ahead and say copy and then edit again and paste it in. And once it's pasted in, it'll just paste it in here, it'll show up at the bottom. You can then select that and then just go ahead and hop in under the display tab, go back to targeting, and then right in here you can go ahead and change things around. So it looks for with this thing, it's topics excluding females, uh, looks to be what I'm doing. So, you know, with this campaign, I might go ahead and say, well, you know what, I want to remove the demographic data and um, go ahead and add in some keywords or exclude uh, in this male. So I might go in here and re-add in females, but I'm going to exclude males. And now I can change this ad group to exclude males instead of females. So by copying it, it's just a quick way, instead of you having to re-put in all the ads again, you can just copy and paste several times and then go in and change each and every ad group out to match whatever type of targeting that you want to set up. And that's going to be it for this video. In the next video, we're going to be covering more of optimization on display, which is a uh, should be a jam-packed video with lots of really good information, so be sure and check it out.